Alright everybody, I'm about to show you guys how to actually use Kai Linux within VirtualBox via OS 10. So right now I'm actually using a slightly older version but still a significant version of OS 10. So without further ado, let me go ahead and get started with this. I chose new on the VirtualBox. So basically I typed in Kai Linux, chose Linux, so forth. Give this a gig of RAM. Hit continue. Using existing drive. So I saved all my VMs under documents, virtual machines, and I've colored links in this folder. This is a VDMK file. I'll find the one that's actually VM.VMDK. So here's how you know it's the right VMA, sorry, the right one to choose in VirtualBox. It's going to be VM.VMDK. So I choose and open this one. Hopefully everything runs as smooth as it did in Windows. Hit create. Go into settings. Go to system. Make sure everything is set up properly. You don't want it to boot from either one of these parts. It's a hard drive installation. So move the hard drive all the way up. You want to use a mouse because you don't have a tap, not using a tablet on this. We have a processor. We have one CPU. Probably enable that. Had a separation set up properly. Display. Probably ahead and get the full one on that. Not trying to use all that, so I'll hit OK again. Let's now go ahead and start it. Fingers crossed this works. Seems to have a few driver issues, probably because, of course, on a mic architecture and it's the first time booting in, so let's see what happens. Okay, again, a few warrants in there, but at least we are able to get to a desktop. Success! Kyle Linus actually is up and running on my OS 10 machine. And as you guys know, I'm using VirtualBox 4.36 when it came out earlier, probably last year. And as you guys know, the type of Mac I'm using, using OS 10.6.8 with these specs. Okay, for this VM and this test, we're going to use root and then tour. Log in.
And of course, hit the Apple button to get in and out. Give us some time to load in. As you can tell, it's taking a little while. For some reason, it takes longer to load. Here we go. Now it's up and running. And boom, we can now get to everything in here. Even had a little Arduino kits. But for your cl for classes, did you guys want to be at? Where it says Cali Linux. Hold the mouse better. Because you're never safe for like snort. Alright, sorry. I mean, Wireshark is there. We have Wireshark, we also have Ethercap. Should also have Zen Map somewhere. Patch attack, should have good old can enable that's on here. Oh yeah. Hmm, von Brill analysis. All right, here we go. We have your end map here. I could have sworn Zen map was on here as well, but I might be mistaken. But yeah, you go to network scanners. There's your end map. What's well, fingerprinters? Fingerprint, sorry. Analysis. This is L. Even some statistical stuff in here. So some some nice stuff the guys can play around with. OS back doors. A lot of nice little tools in there. You have NCAT. Some dissemblers in there. Buggers. Sortation coil. Ooh, Metasploit. It's on here. Yeah, it's so like you guys should be all set. Just make sure you follow those guidelines I told you earlier. So now we know all this is working. I can now log this machine off. Let's see, go to places. Actually, I need to go here. Kind okay, of move the screen around a little bit so I can see what's going on. So more like a uh, click where it says root to log off. So here I said instead of logging out, you know, I'll just shut this thing down. So I can show you guys a little more stuff. So go ahead and shut it down. And that's one drawback to even virtualization as it will run slower than other machines. Because you know how now, boom, the mouse is moving a lot faster. While I was in that mode, it was going kind of sluggish. Same finish up. And network, I just kind of kept the real summary key right there in NAT. So hopefully this answers some of the questions you guys may have. As you can see, everything does work. And you also have the other option of running as on the ISO. So I'll go ahead and hit new again. Call this Kali Linux Live Distro. Continue. Giga RAM again. Why not? Somebody just want to create a new virtual disk. Go ahead and create a VDI. Dynamically allocate it. Since I'm not going to be doing too much, let's go ahead and make this just big enough to where it's actually not going to give me an error. So I'll say make this a gig. That's good enough. Now hit this time we'll go to settings. Do the send down to system. 
We need a mouse, not a tablet, and that maybe will screw up a lot of people. They may have a USB tablet when it actually should be a mouse. So make sure that's not the issue, because that may give you a fatal error. Now use the floppy disk, and we're not using the hard drive. So I'll uncheck those two. CPU is set up good. Get that straight. Display. Bump up the RAM. Storage. This is actually where you want to actually change it up and actually choose a CD. So now I got to choose a virtual CD. So I go back to my documents, virtual machines, and now I'll pick the Linux, I mean Cal Linux ISO. Hit OK. Now go ahead and start it up and go from there. Okay, I just want to do live, so let's go. Let's make sure that this works as well. Okay, and this one gave me an error. Let me start again. Let me try the Francis mode, see that works. I need to have PAE, so always get out to check your error messages. So close that out. I've got to set that up in my settings. So now I go to system, processor turn that on otherwise Kotlin's will not work so in other words under extended features if enable PAENX is not checked Kotlin's will not boot up I repeat Kotlin's will not boot up if this right here is not checked so now I hit OK now I'll go ahead and start it up So now I start out Cal Linux. And now it's actually booing up like it's supposed to. So guys, keep in that one simple check mark checkbox you forgot. So go ahead and let this load up. And I apologize to anyone who's also using the Mac if I missed that, but Sometimes the only way you can really see stuff in here is to actually play around with it for a while. And of course, since it's actually booting from a live CD, it's going to take a bit longer than from a virtual hard drive. So let's give it a little bit more time and it should work. And we can go from there. And hopefully those of you that are in my class, this semester, if you're watching this video now, this should hopefully remove a lot of headaches you may have by just trying to get this thing up and running. And as a continuation for the video, I actually posted a few months ago. Yes, I found I was able to get Calendars up and running. It turns out that the ISO files that are actually online has some issues trying to boot them within a virtual machine. Hence why a virtual, sorry, a VMware appliance actually was pre built for people to actually use it within VirtualBox or VMware. And of course, I was too stubborn to use it. I want to find out, yeah, I used the pre built appliance, and of course, that hard installation does work at that point. If I want to play with a live CD, then of course, it's booted from a live CD. Because the issue was, out of everything, everything seemed to work until, boom, you try to install to a hard drive. I'm trying to install to a hard drive, that's when everything screwed up. So, FYI, if you're playing around Kyle Linux, there are some bugs in, this in, the installation, in the installation of the software when it comes to installing to a virtual hard drive. But if you're trying to install it to a regular hard drive, you shouldn't have this issue. However, I don't, I don't expect you guys or anybody out there to try to install this on a real hard drive, especially on a machine that you actually want to use for other stuff because you can probably screw your data up. And um, Kotlin is probably not exactly the best 
OS used for day to day operations. Okay, get saying a little bit, some little bit more time to boot up, and we should be back into the desktop. Go ahead, capture. Get a little time for the boot up. Once thing is done, then we can go ahead and say, yep, we're gonna go ahead and make this. Okay, I should boot it into the system without me having to type in the password. Let's go to applications, should basically have most of everything the same. On the cat Linux, yep. A little bit of fuzz testing here. Some miscellaneous scanners. Now we see Zen map on the miscellaneous scanners and ISO. Nice. Also assessment. Database assessment. So I go through the web applications as well, so like they made it a little bit more advanced. So this person is like one newer than the one that was actually on the pre-existing VMware image. And you have your little media players there. Nice, something to play around with your Adreno and some Pi programming. Aaron, you probably got a full-fledged, yep. Hmm, so known as Ice Weasel for your <clears throat> web browsing. Full graphics tools, of course. Ham radio setup. Nice. And you have Vim. You know why I say, but let me check to see how the interface looks for Ice Weasel real quick. Okay, guys, this is Ice Weasel. This is very similar to Firefox. In fact, let me see. Oh, it looks like Firefox because it's also made by Mozilla. So, yeah, it's going to look very similar. And I can see, due to the way this emulation is, it is taking a while for it to load up. So, you may not want to bump the graphics memory up that much because I see it is killing the performance. I can see Terran right now so it tries to actually load the pages, even though they do come up with a relatively decent speed. Yep, and of course it has the private window feature that you see in Firefox. And you probably get a little warning. Yep. Just like Firefox. Okay, so let me close out of this. Close out of that. Shut this boy down and call it a day.